Hey everyone, welcome to our real interview experience series. As you know, we share our subscribers interview experience here. So one of our subscribers, Hassan Qureshi, recently cracked Java developer interview at GoForge. I'll add his LinkedIn profile in the description below. So in this video, I'm going to share everything about the technical questions, what he shared with me. And guys, if you have attended any interview recently, then fill the form below in the description. We will reach out to you. You can choose to share your name or share your experience anonymously. We are also giving gift cards to the participants. So don't miss out and don't forget to subscribe to catch more videos like this. So now let's get started. So guys, first he applied for LinkedIn for a role open for three to seven years of experience and he's having total 3.2 years of experience. So let's discuss his technical interview questions one by one. So after the introduction and the project discussion interview directly asked, have you worked on streams? So guys, you must know Java. Right? This is very important topic. So you can say, yes, I have worked on a stream. Then he asked. Can you explain how would you handle an exception inside a stream pipeline and how would you prevent that from breaking the stream execution? Again, this is very important question. Listen carefully. So to handle exceptions in a stream pipeline, first wrap risky code inside try catch blocks within Lambda and use helper methods that returns default values. This prevent exceptions from breaking the stream and ensure continuous processing. Okay. Then interviewer asked, have you worked on concurrency? So you could say, yes, I have worked on concurrency using executor service, completable future and synchronize. And also you could say lock mechanism to manage multiple threads efficiently. It basically helps improve performance, scalability and responsiveness in high load and multi-threaded application. Then guys, he asked if two threads are accessing and modifying the same shared resource simultaneously, what steps would you take to avoid race condition? 90% interviewers ask this question. This is very important. So to avoid race conditions, we could use synchronization techniques like uh, synchronized blocks, reentrant logs or atomic variables. These ensures only one thread modifies the data at a time, maintaining consistency and preventing unpredictable results. Okay. And then guys, interviewer asked to give an example where this might occur in a real world scenario, giving you an example now, but you could tell any example. Okay. So a real world example might be an online banking system where multiple threads, updates and users account balance during simultaneous transactions, right? Without synchronization, concurrent updates could cause incurrent balances or data corruption. Okay. Before moving ahead, guys, I would like to share one important thing with you. Actually, we had launched a complete interview preparation kit. So let me tell you, this kit basically has four main parts. First is complete interview preparation material. It is a step-by-step -step material made by me, expert and MNCs interviewers. 99% of the questions asked in interviews are covered in it. Second is two real enterprise client projects. Code and video recorded sessions are there and you can add this in your resume. Third is lifetime chat support. Here you can ask your doubts anytime time fourth is referral support here we help you get referred on the top mncs so basically this material is organized as per your experience level and covers java spring spring boot spring security spring data jpa kafka microservices gate coding questions stream api coding questions and many more you can buy just a complete interview preparation material or the full kit with project support and referrals i have added the links in the description below so now moving to our interview experience then he asked to explain about an executor. So an executor in Java manages and executes threads efficiently without manually creating them. It provides a thread pool mechanism through service executor, improving performance, scalability and resource utilization by reusing threads for multiple tasks. Okay. And then guys interviewer asked if you are using an executor service to manage multiple threads in a web application, how would you handle the scenario when the task execution time exceeds the expected time and how would you stop the threads? This is also an important question. Listen carefully. So if task execution exceeds expected time, we would use future.cat to limit execution or future.cancel or executor service dot shutdown now to interrupt and stop threats safely, ensuring system stability and avoiding resource leaks. Okay. And then he asked the difference between hash map and hash table. This is very common question. So hash table is synchronized and thread safe, but slower while hash map is not synchronized, allows one null key and multiple null values and offer better performance in single threaded environment. And then guys, he asked hash map is not synchronized, but what issues might arise in a multi-threaded environment when using a hash map and how would you address them? So this is also a very important question. So if you use hash map in multi-threaded environment, it may cause data 
data inconsistency or infinite loops to fix this we could use concurrent hash map for thread save operations or wrap hash map with collections dot synchronized map to ensure proper synchronization and consistency okay and then they ask what's the initial size of hash table so the default initial size of a hash table is 11 and its load factor is 0.75 it means resizing happens when 75 percent of the capacity is fit then he asks, suppose you know the initial size of the hash table and you are performing several put operations how does the capacity of the hash table change and what is the importance of the load factor so when a hash table exceeds its threshold it automatically doubles its size plus one the load factor balances memory usage and lookup performance so it's lower values and reduce collisions but increase space use then he asks, what is serialization this is not a common topic but these type of topics may come in your interview so listen carefully so serialization is the process of converting an object state into a byte stream for storage or transmission whereas deserialization restores it back into an object enabling data persistence and communication between system or applications okay then he asks, can you explain what happens when you try to serialize an object that contains non-serializable fields how would you handle that situation so when an object has non-serializable field serialization fails with not serializable exception to handle this mark such fields as transient or implement custom write object and read object method to skip or manually serialize those fields safely okay then they ask why do we need serialization can you give an example of its use case so as i already told you we need serialization to save object states or transfer them between systems like saving user sessions or sending objects over a network it enables persistence and communication in distributed or remote applications efficiently okay then guys interviewer asks you are building a distributed system where data is being transferred across multiple machines how would you serialize and deserialize objects efficiently and what are the potential challenges so in distributed system we use serializable or efficient formats like json protocol buffers right challenges are version mismatch performance overhead and security risks then they ask the concept of immutability in java are strings immutable again this is also important topic so immutability means an object state control cannot change after creation yes strings in java are immutable to ensure security threat safety and performance through string pooling any modification creates a new string object instead of changing the original and then they ask if strings are immutable what happens when you perform a concatenation operation like str1 plus str2 can you example how it works under the hood so when concatenating strings like str1 plus str2 java creates a new string objects using string builder internally the original strings remain unchanged and the new object stores a combined value ensuring immutability and efficient memory handling okay then they ask when should i use a string builder and string so we should use a string when working with constant or rarely modified text since it's immutable and memory efficient via the string pool whereas we should use string builder for frequent modification like concatenations as it's mutable and faster for dynamic string operations then he asks if you are working on a multi-threaded application how would you choose between using a string builder and string buffer so in a multi-threaded application we should choose a string buffer because it's synchronized and thread safe right in single threaded app scenarios prefer string builder since it's faster and avoid unnecessary synchronizations overhead providing better performance for local string manipulations okay then they ask have you worked on any oops concepts of java so you can say yes i have worked with oops concepts like encapsulation inheritance abstraction and polymorphism to design modular reusable and maintainable java applications that follow clean architecture and promote flexibility and scalability okay then interviewer asks, can you think of a situation where polymorphism might lead to an issue such as in a scenario with overridden methods how would you resolve it so polymorphism can cause issues when an overridden method changes behavior unexpectedly for example a subclass altering logic may break parent expectations to resolve it maintain consistency contract use override annotation and follow list of substitution principle this is the best practice right then he asks about polymorphism and different types of it so polymorphism allow one interface or method to behave differently based on the object it has two types compile time and runtime right compile time is method overloading and compile time is method overriding it enables flexibility and reusable code through dynamic or static method binding 
okay then they ask can you explain how method overloading and method overriding differs in terms of polymorphism and give an example where you would use each so basically method overloading happens within the same class with different parameters lists resolved at compile time whereas method overriding occurs between parent and child classes with the same method signature resolved at runtime for dynamic behavior okay then he asks what's a default server in spring boot so the default server in spring boot is apache tomcat which is embedded and starts automatically when the application runs providing easy setup for serving web applications without needing external server configuration okay and guys and he asks if you wanted to change the default embedded tomcat server from tomcat to jet in spring boot what configuration changes would you need to make and what impact might that have on performance so this is also an important question so to switch to jet first exclude spring boot starter tomcat and then add spring boot starter jet in dependencies basically jet offers better scalability startup for async workload but may differ slightly in configuration and performance tuning compared to tomcat okay guys then they ask how are beans created in spring boot so in spring boot beans are created automatically through component scanning using annotations like component service or repository or manually using bean annotations methods in configuration classes for explicit bean creations and customization okay and guys an interviewer asked to imagine you have two beans of the same type but need to inject a specified one based on some runtime condition how would you achieve this in spring boot so to inject a specific bean at runtime we have to use qualifier or primary annotation to choose between the beans for dynamic selection we should use conditional annotation profile annotation or custom logic with bean methods returning specific instance based on the runtime condition then guys he asked about jpa so jpa stands for java persistence api it is a specification that simplifies database interaction in java by mapping objects to relational tables and handling crud operations automatically through orm frameworks like hibernate without writing complex sql queries okay then they asked can you explain the difference between one to many and many to one relationships in jp and this is a very common question and also he asked to give an example when you would you use each in a real world scenario so one to many means one entity relates to many others example one customer has many orders right many to one means many entities linked to one for example many orders belong to the one customer both maintain bi-directional or undirectional relationships okay then he asked have you worked on apis tell me the process to create rest api in spring boot so guys this is very important question 99 percent interviews ask this question so yes you can say i have worked on apis to create a rest api in spring boot first define a rest control annotation right then map endpoints with request mapping then handle data via service and repository and in the end expose responses in json using spring boot auto configuration okay then they ask if you are building a rest api with spring boot and you need to handle versioning what strategies would you use to version the api so this is also an important question so for api versioning we should use uri versioning example v1 slash urls users right request parameters headers or content negotiations right and in the end he asked two very famous coding questions guys first was write a program to create an object of a student class having id name marks and sorted by marks by using stream the second was to print the palindromic strings from the list of string by using stream so i'll provide the solution of these questions in the description below so guys this is all about hassan's interview experience at coforge please make sure to check the interview question kit thank you